Welcome, everyone, to the Aperio Lightning Talks uh, for Thursday, April 27, 2017. Uh, the Lightning Talks are for open source projects that are part of the um, Aperio Foundation set of uh, projects for which uh, Aperio supports. That was kind of an awkward sentence, but I hopefully got the point across that Perio provides uh, various services like infrastructure, community coordination, licensing management, and other kinds of support to help uh, open source projects for higher education uh, be sustainable and, and healthy and grow. Um, and uh, the farm group in particular is a volunteer group from our Perio community who wants to find ways to encourage people uh, to collaborate even more than they already do uh, and share resources and uh, to make enhancements to existing Sakai projects, uh, I'm sorry, existing Aperio projects uh, possible or more possible and easier. So um, that's the purpose of these lightning talks is to just get some ideas out there. If an idea strikes you that, that you know, really resonates, you might want to go to the farm website. Uh, if the idea is already there, hopefully it is, then vote on it or contact maybe one of the presenters and start building some momentum to make the, pro the enhancement idea a reality. Um, the way that this is structured is that each presenter, we have five presenters for today. We initially had six, but uh, one presenter had to drop out uh, due to uh, just being uh, having some local institutional management issues. I think a rescheduled exam, something of that nature. <clears throat> so we have five presenters. Each presenter, I'm going to time for five minutes. Uh, we'll do them in order. And thank you, Wilma, for, for pasting the link to the place for voting. And we'll do the presentations uh, one after the other, and at the end we'll make pl we have plenty of time for questions. And you can ask uh, whichever uh, project that you have an interest in or enhancement you have an interest in. Um, so I think that's it. Unless does anyone else have anything else to add? Uh, Dave E is suggesting a hashtag for Twitter users of Love Lightning Talks. Um, feel free to tweet. Uh, we have at Aperio.org is the uh, is the Twitter account for Aperio. And then uh, Matt Burgess says, love Dave hashtags. I don't think we want to use that one broadly. Well, you're welcome to use whatever you want. <laughs> so, OK, so uh, I'm going to start here. And the way this work presenters, it should be pretty smooth and easy. It worked out pretty well last time, which is I'll bring up a presentation and I'll uh, then set presenter permissions to you. So you can uh, you know, slide through your go through your slides, navigate through your slides on your own. So you don't have to depend upon me or ask me to move them. So the first one, Alan, are you ready to get started? Yes. Great. So I'm bringing up your slides. That's your right slide set, right? Correct. OK, and I've just given you presenter permissions. And I'm going to set the timer and go ahead and uh, get started when you're ready. Great, thank you. You're welcome. So. In my five minutes here, just wanted to quickly present an idea for improving the student presentation of the gradebook. In Sakai 11, our gradebook got a great upgrade, and it was a lot of love towards the faculty on the interface and the presentation. But I'd like to give a little bit of love to the students as well related to the gradebook. So this is currently what the current gradebook looks like from the student perspective. And so we want to change this to something like this. And let's zoom in and break these items down. So basically, the goals overall of the project are promote student engagement, reduce student grade confusion, and support some different presentations of grades to students based on instructor preferences. So essentially, what we want to do is add a progress bar for students within the gradebook. So having something visual gives them context of where they are and how far they still need to go. I'm also proposing turning what's currently the course grade into something called the progress grade, because it's a running total, what they've earned thus far, while they still have, quote unquote, miles to go before we sleep. And adding a possibility of this overall course grade, which is the raw total. 
we want to give instructors control over these features, such as allowing them to turn on whether the progress bar exists, whether to turn on that progress grade, which is kind of the current calculation that we see in, in the gradebook today, and whether they want to turn on the raw total. And there's always instructor debate about these items. And kind of a teaser, um, I could see this kind of information also showing up eventually back into instructor view, but as kind of an early warning system. And this is courtesy, if you see down below, um, based on uh, my early thoughts, Wilma came in and started thinking also about the instructor and adding this progress thermometer for students within the instructor view. So um, I can also see, let me go back to this view real quick. I could also see options here where an instructor could also have check boxes and to turn on the course average. So sometimes professors might like to have the bar set or uh, you know some kind of metric related to like how this student is doing in relation to other students. And potentially there could be other kind of engagement items such as your activity in the class compared to the most active student in the class compared to the class average. Um, so I could see that potentially being there as well as an engagement meter or something to basically encourage or promote students. So if you wanted to learn more, at least related to the progress bar, uh, I also have a, a PDF that kind of breaks down things a little bit more and adds a little bit more detail. Uh, Neil, what's my time? Well, you're, you're sort of uh, got a break because uh, I started the timer, but then somewhere in the, in the middle, I accidentally paused it. So you've got extra time. So my timer says two minutes and 30 seconds, but I suspect it's really less than that. <laughs> so no worries. Um, I'm sure, you know, I see in the chat something about FERPA. Absolutely. You know, I mean, there, there are certain things, but this is the student view. So it would be private to that student. Um, it would never say anybody else's grade or, or other things. And I think some of this is also based on instructor preference as well. But you know, any project like this would need to be taken, those things would need to be taken into account. But relation to uh, an individual student seeing his or her own grade progress, um, I don't think there are any FERPA issues related to that. Cool. And uh, just briefly, Alan, I don't know if we introduced who you are and where you're from. Ah, well, my name is Alan Regan. I'm from Pepperdine University. OK, thanks. Are you are you uh, done with your five minute slot? I, I think I'm finished. Awesome. Short and Thank sweet. You. Yep, that's beautiful. Thank you. OK, let me uh, cancel the timer and bring up uh, the next one and we'll uh, Take this back here. How do I get that back? And the next one will be uh, Martin Ramsey. So that's the analysis tool. So let me bring that one up. And give Martin the floor. And Martin, if you could just quickly introduce yourself and then uh, start your presentation, I'll start the timer. Martin, you're muted in case you think you're talking. Well, I, th I actually thought I had unmuted myself, so it's a good thing I asked the question. Can you hear me? And the answer was <laughs> happening silence. <laughs> okay. OK. So now you can hear me, yes? Yes, now we can hear you. <laughs> so um, I want to make a pitch for fixing Evalsys, which is a provisional tool that's being used by a lot of our member schools. Um, and when I say our member schools, just quickly to be clear, we are the LAMP Consortium, which is a bit unusual in that we have a community of 25 member institutions, all who share a single instance of Sakai. And many of our members use Avalsys extensively for end of term course evaluations and, and for other purposes too. And I know that virtually everyone on this conference call will recognize the importance of assessment. In fact, Alan's presentation just was you know, another plea for uh, feedback and assessment and that sort of thing. Uh, but I kind of look at Evalsys as part of the, well, really kind of a cornerstone of assessment functions within Sakai. So um, as I understand it, 
Evalsys was initially developed by several schools collaborating to build an internal evaluation system for Sakai. And there's, there's frankly a lot to like about Evalsys. Um, the use of flexible scales and reusable question items that can be organized into templates, that's really well designed. And customizable reminder emails that can be sent to students is another nice feature. Um, we in the LAMP Consortium particularly like the fact that surveys can, deployed, uh, can be deployed in three different ways. Um, of course, you can deploy a survey to a specific course or site in Sakai, but um, we really like the fact that you can also deploy surveys to a node in the, develop, uh, the, the delegated access hierarchy. So you could, for example, send the same survey to all classes in the College of Fine Arts or the School of Nursing. Um, we do that sort of thing a lot. And of course, the third uh, way that you can do this is you can actually deploy surveys to an ad hoc group with just an email address. They don't even have to have a Sakai account. Um, that's important. And in some ways, that means that Evalsys at least has the potential of taking the place of a tool like SurveyMonkey if, if it worked like it should. And that's the problem. Um, I'm basically, I'm here because Evalsys feels like it's incomplete, like it's still in beta. Um, you can see on the screen here some of the specific issues that our folks have identified or summarized uh, for when I, I, I asked them, I polled my member schools and said, you know, give me some specific feedback about Evalsys. And I got a rather long and detailed list. And the fact is that Evalsys just doesn't really quite measure up. It's a great idea that didn't get fully implemented. Um, and so basically I'm here to plead with the farm group for focusing some attention on Evalsys. Um, and so I am curious, I don't know if uh, this is appropriate, Neil, or not, but are, are we the only folks that are using Evalsys or are lots of schools using Evalsys? I, I don't know um, how, what that, you know, what that is. Um, and yeah, okay, I'm seeing some of the, the, the talk that's going on in the, in the chat here. Um, you know, there are all kinds of issues, but if we're the only people who's using it, um, I, you know, maybe, maybe we need to go somewhere else. Um, in fact, I, I guess I'll close by saying we, we sort of feel like we're at a crossroads. Either Evalsys needs to be finished and turned into something that's truly useful, or we need to look elsewhere for commercial tools that we can interface with Sakai, maybe using LTI. Um, we've looked at several, um, but, you know, we, our preference would be to, to make the tool within Sakai really work well. So I'm just sort of curious about what you all think about it um, and appreciate you listening. And I'll turn my time back over to you, Neil. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Martin. And maybe just mention who you are and, and who you're with. I think oh, you kind of did, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Martin Ramsey. I'm the managing director of the LAMP Consortium, which is this group of 25 schools uh, that, that share a single instance of Sakai. We're the, we're the weird people in the Sakai community. <laughs> That's an interesting way to put it. Well, we uh, thank <laughs> well, thank you, Martin. Uh, we're going super fast here, guys. So that's great. Uh, super fast lightning talk. So I'm going to take this back here, the presenter permissions. And Honestly, next, time, Neil, we have to go fast. <laughs> yeah. And there's that, that'll just give us more time for questions and discussion. So there's, there's no, that's no problem at all. Um, the next one is uh, Matt Burgess. Matt, I'm going to bring up your slides on um, the Sakai tools feature. So let me do that. Toolbox project. Here we go. And let me give you permission uh, for presenting. Where are you, Matt Burgess? I don't see you here. Oh, there you are. You logged I'm in. I'm up at the very top. Yep. Yep. You logged in as a. Yep. Understandable. All right. I got got you ready. I'm going to go ahead and set the timer. Um, and let me go ahead and cancel and reset. And anytime you're ready to start, maybe just briefly say who you are and go into your presentation. All right, everybody, give me just one second because I'm going to actually share my screen here. Okay. He's he's a very risky risk. Uh, tolerant person. <coughs> I like to live on the edge. What can I say? Yeah. OK, so I'm sorry for the stealth text there on the toolbox project slide, but my name is Matt Burgess. I'm from the University of Virginia. And I'm going to talk to you guys just a little bit about the toolbox project, which is something that we are just getting started with here at UVA. 
the tool project the toolbox project is really inspired by two ideas uh the desire to use the process of adding tools to new or existing sites as a way to really showcase the power and flexibility of sakai and it's also inspired by a joint initiative between the College of Arts and Sciences here at UVA and the Scholarly Technology Group, which is the group that manages our instance of Sakai at UVA, to create some additional site templates for faculty use. The desire to create some new site templates has really generated some more discussion about how faculty access these templates and how we can encourage the faculty, inspire the faculty to use them even more. So I'm going to go ahead and maximize this mock-up here so that you guys can take a closer look at it. This project is in its initial stages here at UVA. Some preliminary wireframes have been prepared and circulated, and we've prepared a preliminary prototype uh, using the web software InVision, which some of you may be familiar with. There are really two basic themes surrounding our initial design work. Uh, to make the UI of site construction, whether you're adding tools to an existing site or building a new site, to make that UI more in line with the updated Sakai 11 UI, particularly the NYU skin, which we're adapting for our own use here at UVA when we go live with Sakai 11 later next month. And also, we're trying to make the process of site construction more visually and textually compelling. Uh, visually compelling through an increased use of images everywhere. You don't see a lot of images in the current site construction processes. And textually compelling through the addition of more targeted text designed to get people excited about the process and the specific tools within it instead of just three or four words for some tools that may not give instructors an idea of what those tools are really about. So in our prototype here you see that the user trying to create a new site is presented with two options right here off the bat, collaboration or course. You see that there are some images here to make this a little more compelling and some targeted text to tell the users a little bit more about what those two different site types are. If we want to create a course site, we'll select that. We'll see a term drop down appear here. We'll select the term that we want to create. And we will go to the next stage of the process, which is the template selection process. Obviously, you can choose to build your own site or to create a custom site. One of the great things about Sakai is its customizability. So we want to list that first here. But this project offers the opportunity for you to create all sorts of site templates associated with different types of courses and make those available to instructors of those courses. So for example, if we want to learn more about a lecture course site template, we can click here on the learn more button. We can see a pop-up window that will give us even more information about that lecture course site template, what it does, see some screenshots, maybe even watch a short screencast or video. And then if we decide that we want to use that course site template, we can select it right here on the page. Or we can click anywhere to return to that templates list and even select that template right here without having to click that learn more button. One of the opportunities of adding some search bars or some drop down menus here would be the opportunity to add additional site templates without that process becoming too saturated or too inundated with different templates. We could add a number of extra templates and for example, the instructor could select to see only templates uh, that were built for a particular type of course, and those would appear there in that drop down menu. And of course, if you want to create your own site, you can still do that by choosing this custom course site option. If you select that, you see here something that is a little more visual and that also provides an opportunity to get a little more information about each of these tools while still allowing you the ability to add them right here from this screen. If you want to learn more, you can click on the learn more button. You can see a pop-up window here. You can see some videos and screencasts, and you can also add right here. That's it. Thanks very much, Neil and everybody. Wow, that was right on time. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. That was the idea. <laughs> OK. Timed it well. All right. Thank you, Matt. And we have uh, our next presentation is going to be from Yona Feinstein. So let me go ahead and take back presenter permissions to bring up those slides.
And this will be on um, the simplified installer idea. So, Yuna, are those the right slides for you? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, hear you fine. And I've just given you presenter permissions. And so when you're ready, um, I will start the timer. Feel free to just say a little bit about yourself and then uh, get started. Sure. My name is Yona Feinstein. I'm from Pepperdine University. I'm an educational technologist. I'm a tech educator. Um, what I found was that um, in the this year, we've, we're about to upgrade to Sakai 11. And in that process, I was uh, tasked with researching our competitors, what, what, el what other LMS platforms are doing, and what makes them special, and how can we implement some of their best features into Sakai 11. So I found was that, one, looking at other platforms, our website is unremarkable. Sakai's subcrowdproject.org is unremarkable. It looks just like the other ones. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make Aperio and Sakai special and unique. We need to maybe do a redesign of what the whole Sakai platform is. Because uh, getting the whole download button and getting going for new educators and new schools trying to develop a Sakai platform, it needs to be much more special and unique. So when you get to this download page for Sakai, it's, it's just... It's really complicated, especially for people who are not technologically trained. For people who are headmasters of schools, with especially small schools, 100 or less faculty, and not even a dedicated technology department, it's going to be quite tricky and hard to f figure out how to do this whole thing. The second thing is understanding the language behind getting the Sakai going. So if you look at the demo instructions here, the first word, the big word is hypersonic SQL. If you're not a technologically savvy person who doesn't know what SQL is off the bat, especially hypersonic SQL with this language here, plus there's also spelling errors in this documentation here, it's going to be quite complicated. I, I'm a Google certified educator. I have a number of years working at uh, Apple Genius Bar. I do personal tech supporting um, uh, for clients across the board, plus I've done tech support for schools. I tried developing this myself three times, and I did, couldn't even get it going with the, with the technology um, support of Pepperdine University. Uh, the third thing is, when you actually do get the installer package, it's quite complicated to figure out how to work it. It requires a de de uh, deploy of Apache. Um, it, it requires so many things to develop and get it going. Um, it just, it's really, really complicated. Uh, if you look at the Moodle deploy, it's like super easy. It's installer package is quite easy. So what is, what is the solution? It's a three-step process. So it's new and clean, engaging user interface. Because we need something very new um, to really attract new educators and new schools. And we also need, a, uh, we need direct instructions of how to put the whole thing together. And we need an all-inclusive installer package. So clean interface, curated interface with bright colors, dynamic and engaging <coughs> images, simple layout, quick access for menus and icons, and like any other LMS service, we need something special and unique, especially because this is open source. We need to make open source in Sakai really appealing for new people. We need installer and documentation language that's targeted towards educational professionals, not technology people, but people who are going to adopt this lay leadership, small school boards. We're going to say, you know, this is a great thing. It's easy to do. Let's bring it to my board. Let's get it going really fast. We also need an installer package for, for demo and sandbox deploy. We need a Sakai admin panel to moderate an instance. We need basic customizable colors to make it appealing for your new school. We need user profiles befitting a trial demo, which says this is really awesome. When we need it really easy to do. So if you look at try Sakai through a long site with Sakai nightly builds, you put your site up, but it refreshes every 24 hours, which means that if you were going to do this at a new school, wants a, a good 30-day uh, install for to try it out with your school and your board, it tries how it's not going to work. And that's pretty much, pretty much imposing. A new interface, a new easy to deploy in the documentation language that makes it easy for a non-technology professional to get it going. Thank you very much. Thank you, Noah. I mean, Yona. Sorry about that. It's all cool. OK, cool. All right, so uh, appreciate that. We have one final presentation, and then I have seen comments flying by the chat, and we can open it for uh, for general discussion. And our 
last presenters uh, for today are Pat Miller and Zhao Jing. Is that yes. close? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Correct. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm shocked that I got that even close to right. Um, <laughs> let me go ahead and bring up your slides and give you, which one of you would like presenter permissions? Because I can only give it to one of you. Yeah, give it to me. Pat, okay. I'll, I'll be I starting it out. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, give it to Zhao Zheng. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we are at the same desk. Yeah. Let's see. And this is on Sakai XAPI. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Show that up there. And let me give you presenter permissions. And there you go. And uh, I'm going to go and set. So feel free to just do a brief introduction of yourself and then get started. And I'll start the timer. Sure. Pat Miller. And I am Xiaoji Duan. Yeah, we work with the LMS team here, and our focus here will be learning analytics. Yeah, so our, our presentation is a little different. We, we want to encourage more users of the Sakai XAPI provider, and, uh, and uh, we're also focusing on the use of open LRS, uh, which is now going to be called uh, soon the Learning Record Warehouse, LRW. Um, we've been using the LRS for about a year, and we think it's a, a, a great uh, analytic environment. Uh, we're just beginning in this, but um, uh, we found it useful. So our, our uh, example here will be just uh, giving, giving a taste for the richness of the data you get from XAPI and the feeds into the OpenLRS, uh, which is another Aperio project. Uh, so our main point here is to encourage the use of uh, this new analytic environment and the XAPI provider, which is, uh, which is in Sakai. And the more use we get, the more enhancements we can also encourage to the, we've already contributed back some enhancements to the XAPI provider to get more data. Uh, and in, in, our, in this uh, example, we're just uh, providing you a taste for the type of uh, en enrichment uh, you can get from the data. So here we go. Um, the uh, initial, uh, what, what we're showing here is just that there was an example where um, a faculty wanted some information uh, about uh, feedback that they were giving to students and could not get it through the normal forms. Uh, we weren't getting it from our little operational data store that is provided by our hosting partner. Uh, and uh, we could not get it from site stats. So Zhao Jing is actually going to describe um, uh, our particular use case. OK, thanks, Pat. So one day, we got a request from a professor who is teaching an intermediate level of Excel class this semester in business school. He wanted to know if his students we used the feedback he provided to the homework. The homework is to solve some business problems using Excel. And the students submitted their Excel file as attachment to the Sakai assignment tool. And the professor downloaded those Excel files and reviewed them and gave very detailed and personalized feedback, like showing in this screenshot here and then delivered those uh, feedback file as a great at attachment through the assignment tool. So you can tell the professor spent a large amount of time and effort on this. But what, the students, what did the students do with the feedback? To help the professor answer that question, as Pat mentioned, we first looked at the site stats, but couldn't find any data on the usage of those feedback files. Pat also dug into the Redshift data warehouse, which logs all the Sakai events, but couldn't find anything related to those feedback files either. So our last resort is a learning record store. As Pat mentioned, the learning record store is a repository of all the XAPI statements, which describes the student's activity in Sakai. So I run a query with all the feedback file names in the record in our learning record store and come up with all those statements. Let's take a look at one of the statements. Like, for example, this statement tells us this user interacted with this feedback file 
on March 27th at this time. The interact, this verb is defined in the XAPI standard. It translates into content that read in the Sakai environment. So this statement tells us who viewed what feedback file at what time. You have so, about 30 seconds left, by the way. Yeah, so I downloaded all the data and shared it with the professor. And I also used the uh, data analysis and the visualization to, to create this bar chart. Each of the colored bar represent a student. Each of the row here represent a feedback file. And the height of the bar shows how many times the students viewed the feedback, feedback file. So from this bar chart, we can easily tell who watched, uh, who viewed which feedback file at what time. And this kind of data kind of depressed the professor a little bit because it turned out only seven students out of 36 viewed the feedback, but it got him thinking in the meantime. So what's the correlation between the student's feedback viewing activity and the course grade? So yeah, there are more work needs to be done. Yeah, that's what all we have for today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. I know it's a lot to squeeze in and a very little time. All right, so we went through five presentations. There were uh, a number of comments uh, in the chat, and I'm just going to uh, take time. First of all, thank all the presenters. Um, all these presentations seem really timely and relevant uh, to the community and based on the feedback as well. Um, so great job. And just curious if people want to ask any questions or pick up threads of any of the discussions. Uh, for these uh, five projects or potential next steps. Um, and I can mention, if it will help, I can mention each project and uh, individually and see if there's questions on it. Maybe just go through it that way. Uh, or again, yeah, take one at a time. So just going back to Alan's uh, grade report visualization. Uh, Alan, do you already have a farm um, idea posted on our farm new new development ideas area, or is this something brand new? I have not posted it. No, this is something I wanted to introduce as a pitch first. Okay, and so since you're introducing as a pitch, how about we get a little bit of feedback? I'm curious how many people um, are interested in that idea of the uh, the grade report visualization. And I see Terry's writing, could the progress bar be developed with gamification elements? Uh, and S writes plus one, which I assume is against that idea. Um, I'm sure that we can, we can basically, you know, working with a bunch of different institutions, everybody's going to have a different idea on how we can visually represent. And also, bearing in mind, visual is only one way of presenting. We have to have accessibility as well. Um, but how can we be more engaging in the grade report? And uh, since it's one of the aspects of kind of assessing where a student is, and as an instructor myself, I'm often asked, you know, like, how am I doing? You know, can I, can I provide a visual? Can the system provide a visual and give other factors or metrics that can help the student see where they are? And we definitely, I saw that one comment, we definitely take everything into you know, the lens of FERPA or other kinds of, of issues. But from a, an individual student, they want to know, how am I doing? And often they ask, how am I doing in relation to the others in the class? So without giving away any other individual information, I think sometimes having that bar set of, oh, I seem to be on track, or, oh, I'm behind the, I'm behind the curve. I need to move forward and be more engaged. So those, those were my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and it looks like there is some plus ones in the chat room, so um, I would encourage you to put the idea up on the uh, the farm new ideas. And if you need some assistance, uh, feel free to contact the farm uh, group as well. Um, Martin has a suggestion for me to put up each uh, one as we're talking about it. So any other final comments on the gradebook idea? Okay, I'll go back here and see what people are saying. Um, and so Mitch uh, asks, have you run it by the uh, the Gradebook NG folks? In other words, there's been, up till now, 
uh, you know, for, for Sakai 11, we had a pretty tight knit team that was working on Gradebook NG um, that should sort of transition more broadly to the community, but it, it still seems like that team's pretty heavily engaged. So um, that was the question. Have you, you know, that would be like Jeff Pash and Kyle Blythe and Steve Swinsburg and I think it was paid in. So there's like a group of four or five folks that were really putting a ton of effort into the uh, Gradebook NG. Have you contacted them at all? I haven't yet, no. I wanted to see if um, others were interested in the concept before taking extra steps. Okay, cool. Well, it, se it seems like there is. So that seems like there's some encouragement there for you. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, let's go to the next one for discussion was uh, the analysis. Show. So just for folks who may not be familiar, Valsys is what's called a contrib tool, which means it does not ship natively with Sakai. So it's something that you have to pull down separately and, um, and install in your Sakai installation. It's still under an open source license. It's still under um, the ECL Education Community License version 2. Uh, it's totally open source, 100% open. It's just that it doesn't come ship with Sakai out of the box. So um, curious of the interest level in Valsys. Yeah, Neil, I'm I'm curious. Are people, you know, is it being used? It sounds it looked like in the chat earlier that some folks were saying yes, we're using it, but I didn't get a clear sense. Okay, so Marist is using it. I think I heard that that Oxford's using it. Yeah, yeah, we use it. Older version. Ever such a lot. Mm -hmm. but, but as I said in the chat, we use uh, quite an old version because we didn't we didn't trust the newer versions. <laughs> <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. So I think we're using sort of version 1.3 with a few few extra bug fixes applied to it. I'm, I'm seeing that a fair number of people are, are using it. That's, that's kind of good to know it. It's a little encouraging. <laughs> yeah, it's actually more than, than I was aware of, personally. Is so, Course Eval another open source tool? What's that? What's Course Eval? That's Good somewhere. question. I think the same thing. Uh, is it possibly a different name for the same thing? Ah, third party. Oh, Course Eval is a commercial product. Okay. Ah, okay. We, we looked at a couple of other commercial products too. I mean, uh, I guess I should say present tense are looking at a couple of other uh, commercial tools, but you know, so much better if it's internal to Sakai and so forth. And as, as Kyle points out, because Evalsys works with the hierarchy, meaning you could deploy a single survey to a whole bunch of courses um, at a node in the hierarchy, like all of the School of Nursing courses for a particular term, um, that's unlikely to be something that a commercial provider would be able to do for you. I mean, it could be done, but it would get really customized and seriously expensive. Okay, well, thank you, Martin. I hope you got the feedback you were looking for there. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, so let's go and get uh, back to the um, toolbox idea. So any feedback on the toolbox idea? I see still some discussion on the analysis. So the eval this one says the toolbox project. This was the one uh, presented, Terry. Uh, well, Matt, you can describe it if you like uh, around uh, making it more visual and easier workflow for creating different types of sites within Sakai, not just um, core sites. Yeah, that's exactly right, Neil. Sorry for the weird hidden text on this slide. When I created this slide in Quark, the image was mostly transparent but for some reason the pdf export didn't pick it up so that's why the text is hidden there but the text just says the toolbox project reimagining site construction in sakai so how you build and add tools to sites as you're creating them from scratch and also how you add tools to sites that are already created so I'm glad to see that some people are interested in it. I did see in the earlier wave of chats while I was actually giving the presentation a question that Lucy Talents from Oxford had, hi Lucy, about whether the templates had particular tools built in 
or intro text, for example, in the homepage or in lessons? And the answer to that is yes and yes. So the idea would be that the templates do have particular tools built in, which you could further customize uh, with that customized tools button that was included for each template. So for example, if you are teaching a lab and you want to use that lab course site template, but maybe you want to use a tool like Blackboard Collaborate, which is our uh, online discussion tool, you want to add that for some virtual office hours or something like that, you click that customize tools button, it will show you the tools that are already added to that template, and you can add some more. Also, then, um, we would want to add or would at least strongly consider adding, you know, some intro text, some customized CSS in places like lessons, that custom CSS option, which we are just diving into, offers some real possibilities there. So we would want to look at that as well. And I see that Dave has asked, uh, would this affect one-off course site creation? I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that, Dave. So maybe you want to add a little, I see that you have added a little, not so much batch creation of course sites. So we don't do batch creation here. Um, all of our sites are created by the instructors themselves. So this would be a workflow that the instructors would go through or the site creators because we also allow students and staff to create sites. This would be the workflow that the site creators would go through. And Didi, we will be at Aperio. I'm very excited about talking with people about this. I think that Sean Foster is on this call um, and Sean has been doing some work um, on the idea of managing tools and working with site creation um, up at Western. And so I know that Sean is going to be there as well. And we're definitely excited about talking with him about this stuff because he is awesome. As Dave points out in the chat, he has great work. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing a little bit more about what he's been doing because I haven't seen his presentations that he has done thus far, but I'm, I'm excited about looking, um, looking at that stuff as well. Yeah, and as uh, Mitch Golden from Noodle Partners mentioned, they were looking at doing this. Uh, uh, Mitch and I had some discussions, and Mitch had discussions with some developers too, I think, on this. So it might make sense to do like an ad hoc uh, get together at Open Aperio to discuss some of this stuff, because it sounds like several people might be working in kind of that same space already. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, already working on it. Yeah, that'd be great. If people are there and are interested, we are definitely interested, and let's have lunch or something and talk about it. That sounds great. Yeah, there'll be some ad hoc space available, and I think there's going to be easy ways to sign up for that for that space. So, um, and I'm happy to help uh, facilitate if people need. And there's also showcase night. I, I think Rick, Alan wasn't uh, showcase night. Well, I guess like you're talking about like an ad hoc meeting while showcase night's going on. <coughs> okay, cool. So there's seems like there's several. See, I think this could be a good good item because there's a lot of interest. You know, if if they have a table and people can come up and we'll, we'll just take a look at that. Okay, cool. Okay, cool idea. Yeah, that's All great. Right. Thanks for that suggestion, Neil. That's awesome. Okay. Um, all right, so that's that one. Let's go into the next one. So we have time for to get a little bit of follow-up on each of these. Uh, the next one was uh, from Yona. And uh, this one... Uh, you know, I would just say this is incredibly timely uh, because um, the marketing, we have a marketing group in Sakai uh, we ha and uh, we had discussion exactly on this issue. And we have already, I don't know if you're aware, we do have a farm um, idea that's been put out there and the voting just recently kind of shot up there uh, pretty high just below the forums you know, redoing the, re the makeover for the forms tool. So I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Not entirely. Okay. Let me let me show you where that is. Um, let's see, new development. Uh, I know that there's been talk about changing up the marketing strategy for Sakai. And in my process as, as an educator and as a psychologist and trying to get this going, at least for my school, it's just been, it's been so important that I try to, that, that Sakai gets really deployed for people who are new to the field. So I'm going to just paste in the direct link to, uh, oh, somebody did. Kyle uh, Malmberg put, uh, put it, pasted in. So if you look at tricider.com there, that link, there's then a, uh, 
an mm -hmm. idea listed there called Make Sakai Installation Process Super Easy, which is actually something that I put up there a while ago. And then mm -hmm. recently it got bumped up to about 13 votes. It was kind of lingering about six votes. And then we had some discussion around marketing, just like exactly what you're talking about. So mm -hmm. uh, I do think there's a lot of interest in that now. Um, maybe we can make it a priority. It's been something, and the documentation piece um, has been something that has been in the community for a while, you know, talking about how do we, it's both from, you know, how do we overall organize like me and Wilma, the documentation group, have talked about what, what are some good high level ways of organizing documentation documentation, thinking about user roles. So we've actually put some thought into this of, uh, you know, what does he, what does somebody looking at Sakai evaluating it need, which probably should be our top priority. And um, and then what is a user, what kind of resource, how does a user find their way to the documentation they need? What about a developer or an admin? So this is, uh, yeah, like I said, it's timely. And there's also a lot of, um, uh, uh, discussion that's already happened on it. So somehow another one where we probably need to get people together who have an interest in putting energy into this uh, to exploring the best way to go. I don't I don't have the exact answer, but I do at least know that there's been discussions. <laughs> so we've, you know, and kind of figure out how to prioritize. And I also want to mention, uh, you know, shout out, I mean, our Sakai, I don't know if you saw our old Sakai project website, but the new one is actually way, 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 way better than our yeah. old one, I think much, much better job. So could it use improvement from a, and think about it in a different way from a marketing perspective? You know, absolutely want to keep, uh, you know, keep doing that. But I wanted to give some kudos for how amazing of a job it was in the redesign, which was uh, largely Kyle Blythe from NYU mm -hmm. and also working with some other folks behind the scenes. Cool. So sorry to take that out, but that was one that's sort of really alive for me personally. <laughs> Any questions? And Mitch, Mitch mentioned, if you look in the in the uh, chat, there's some conversation there. Right. I I I'm a huge tech nerd, and I'm always building my own servers at home. And I I tried three times, three times on Mac and on Windows on a Linux box, and I got nothing working. And you know, I tried Moodle. Moodle was like ten minutes of install to get everything going, customizing a site. You know, I, I filled out an email link on um on, on some other platforms, and like I, I got a response like right away from D2L. Blackboard called me at my desk ten minutes later. It was remarkable, and like it's, it's, it shouldn't be this hard, especially for an open source free platform. Well, especially I try to try to explain it to like, everyone. It's been it's it's been tricky. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree, and um. Um, so what I'll do, you know, I'll take an action on this in terms of maybe reaching out to you and connect and figuring out who to connect with. Like I said, the documentation group has had some discussion. I've given it some thought. I think there's another person that wants that's interested um, outside of some of the other groups. And I think the marketing group's interested. So uh, maybe figure out how to get people together connected and, and how to push it forward and how to get the resources. Like if there's enough people interested, the idea is how do we, like I think a lot of this is labor intensive. It may not be money intensive or maybe maybe it is, I don't know. You know, like do we need to raise money to pay a commercial affiliate to do something for us to make it easier? Or is this something that if we put enough energy in it together, we can figure out some really good strategies and, you know, update the documentation, figure out a way to make a, an installer package that's easier, et cetera, so. Cool. Yeah. Okay, cool, oh, okay. So let me uh, move on to the next one here. I think the final, last but not least, uh, the XAPI uh, one, which, um, uh, so let me put that back up here. So comments on XAPI, I know that's this is an area that, uh, could very much benefit Sakai if the uh, if these standards sort of if we're sort of leading the the edge on uh, adopting these kinds of standards. Right. Yeah. And uh, at the Tricider site, you know, that was just shown, uh, learning analytics, improving Sakai X API compatibility is on the is on that site. And uh, so I think um, the great thing about the Sakai X API provider and OpenLRS is it's fully under our control. And so, you know, if if we make improvements in the XAPI feed, we immediately see the results, you know, in, in the analytics and the richer the analytics become. So I think the more interest we can get in the Sakai community and the Aperio community, the, the better. Um, we've heard, you know, that the Sakai XAPI um, capture of events is not as rich as 
like uh, for example with Moodle. Um, and uh, so we, you know, we'd like to see more use of uh, the XAPI feed and and more enhancement of it to provide more, you know, richer uh, event capture. Uh, but I mean, it's been very good for us. We, we've been able to make very good use of it at Notre Dame, at, uh, you know, at least for our initial projects. Uh, but the the entire Open LRS is also a great environment, you know, and the the latest version really promises a lot of benefits. Um, so I think we just want to generally push <laughs> the greater use of analytics in this, in the Sakai Aperio community. How uh, are you doing? Are you guys doing a presentation by any chance at Open Aperio? Yes. Yeah, we're going to do a presentation on the new version, the what's now being called the Learning Record Warehouse. Cool. I see some questions. I don't know if you're following the comments oh, and questions yeah. in the chat. Um, I want to check over there. Uh, yeah, that's a good question about the XAPI and Sakai event table. Yeah, the. Um, there are some there are only certain things captured in the Sakai event table and we don't I don't know enough about the diff, you know the technical differences between the event table and Xavier Zhao Zheng might be able to you can go ahead that. yeah I, I can find um, the link the uh, students work to your system uh, well the student anything the student does generally gets captured through XAPI events. Um, uh, and it, it seems to capture more than what we see in the uh, event tables. Um, yeah, so yeah, site stats seems to be very limited on what it provides. And again, I don't know the I don't know the distinction between how site stats get its gets its data and XAPI gets its data. Uh, there are obviously people in the Sakai community who understand all of this because we've we have had some enhancements done by Longsite, for example, uh, has done some enhancements for us, so they understand the back end. Yeah, I just posted a list of all the tools that is generating XAPI statement right now in Sakai. That's cool. I think I'm really glad to hear you're doing a presentation because I think those kinds of things, when people see kind of how you're using it and how your instructors are using it or how it impacts actual student behavior, that's when it gets really, really interesting. Right. Yeah. Uh, the uh, user activity, Sean, that you added, is that the same as the user activity that well, Longsight provides us a user activity. Um, we'll have to take a look at at what you posted there. Uh, as far as Learning Record Warehouse, yeah, I think I think it, Learning Record Warehouse is about to be released. We have we have kind yeah. of a big because we've already been involved in the project. We were given an early, um, uh, you know links to the learning record warehouse um, uh, code and documentation. I think it's going to be released to the general public shortly. So we'll post uh, as soon as we see that available. And just so also everybody uh, is aware, there's other, I mean, these are coming out of other right um, Aperio projects, right? Like the learning record store and the dashboard, those are. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's this other whole learning analytics sort of sub community within Aperio and there's and they're connected with a broader like learning analytics community uh, that that meets uh, pretty regularly. So there's some really interesting stuff. I went to one of those uh, one of those conferences. Uh, some of that stuff was was very academic. It went a little bit over my head, but pretty interesting stuff. All right. Well, thank you. I think it was a really, I hope you guys, uh, presenters all got something out of it. I know that it seemed like from the comments, the uh, the listeners uh, the, uh, who uh, participated and watched your presentations and asked questions and comments got a lot out of it. So thank you again. And um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and hopefully we'll find ways to follow up on, on uh, all these issues. Great. So I appreciate it. 
All right, logging out here. Stop recording. Mm -hmm.